Hi, this is David Erdos with poem 75 from David's Covid. This poem is a tribute to my friend and hero Heathcote Williams, who was the friend and hero to so many other people. Hence the opening image of a star-like light shining against the context of books. This poem is called Heathcote's Will is the Way. Heathcote Williams's personal lockdown occurred throughout the final years of his living. The former rake and poet prince of West London spent those latter days unconfined, while remaining mostly in his upstairs room in Oxford, working away, writing volumes, ecstatic words that sparked towers of faith and belief for gold times. His emphysema curtailed if it didn't cage him completely, but with the beauty of his physical form unreflected, the poem mirrors he made showed what's real. How he would have raged through all this, denouncing Trump in a trocky, and Johnson too, in sharp verses, he'd have had Cummings speared. We would also have had all the facts, prized and rhymed with each shadow, mountains of research crushed to tablets that God would have whispered and scored for his ear. He would have set each heart to full sail, as we crested the seas he set for us. Waters to rise and replenish, as like him we remained not prisoners in our homes, but somewhat wary captives, keen on it all, stilled but thriving, as like the Prospero he played, his word island was a truly magical place, free from pain. Heathcote Williams wrote as most breathe, and he communicated with the countless, as those he prized and loved received letters and postcards and calligraphic envelopes every day. When he slept, I'm not sure, for so many waves brushed his shoreline, and while counting them, he wrote of them and for them too, in full sway. With all of the swagger and ease of the once wild boy of tame cities, writing seismic plays inside cupboards, this one man, psychedelic, tore language apart like plump fruit. He would have exposed the blown heart and let the juices run through his writing. As with his beloved Webster and Marlowe, he lanced each stopped line to bleed truth. We need his voice more than most, and we need him back more than ever. Tragically for us and his children, and his grandchildren too, we will not. And there are so many others, of course, who could have set us straight and wrought anthems of both change and action. Those cosmically caught, star-glazed authors of magic and sound, image, plot. Indications, perhaps, that soon become premonitions. For the prophecy in a poem is how it elevates from the page. It is the means of ascent that this unique man and poet ascended. But looking down, he looks after the greater context now we all face. For life on earth is a draft, and life beyond is refining. And he was always refined, polite, gracious, as the breeding he dared stayed inbred. So this one vital man and his fountain pen summoned fountains. His words restore when encountered, either through his mellifluous voice or when read. His written will was the way, and his spark will always ignite our direction. When I think of our friend, love still rivers, finding him alive and delivered and supernaturally far from dead. For John Henry Heathcote Williams was a light that would scour through this cast darkness. A one-man drug, vibe and movement that would have assuaged every doubt. He was man as day, as every word he wrote coloured evenings. He was heat and hope flashing, just like the light bulb I once saw him remove from his mouth. And so I kiss you, my friend as all who loved you would kiss you. Find us again, H. We need you. For now, a new truth has been written. And as we wait, silenced, we won't really know how to begin when this ends. But what I do know is this, that somewhere out there your past comment on a manuscript made from cosmos, the great poet perfects it. For even in life, love defends. David Erdos, May the 23rd, 
2020.